Hello and welcome to another episode of Reactor Toots. My name is Peter. It's been a while. Um, I've just been kind of getting acclimated to vast and sunny Los Angeles. And I also I also started working on uh, working two different internships. So it's been pretty hectic the past couple months, but I'm here now with the wind chime ensemble that we were working on. Uh, just previous to this tutorial and it kind of it kind of sucks I mean it's pretty basic but it's, it's not very interesting let's be honest here um, so I thought it would be cool to maybe go over um, keep working on this ensemble and then get into a little bit of FM synthesis and I'm not necessarily going to talk about what FM synthesis is. There's plenty of other tutorials out there that go over the basics of FM. I'm just going to be getting into right into the implementation. So if you are interested and want to find out more about frequency modulation synthesis, you need to check out, uh, I like the reactor diary tutorial video on FM synthesis. That's really good. There's also really good tutorial videos, um, using FM eight to, to explain the basics. So, I give a quick look at those and then maybe come back to this so you realize what's going on. If, But if you already know what FM is, then that's fine. So let's get into it. If we open up here, I'm also trying this new screen resolution to make everything bigger. So hopefully it works out. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a sine wave that has an FM input right there. Let's see, it has the P input. Uh, uh, the P input for all the MIDI pitch information and it has an F input which says input for linear frequency control um, scale is one Hertz per unit that's basically where another oscillator goes that's where the modulator oscillator gets connected to let's put this right here so that being said let's connect the really quick Let's make a new macro to contain our modulator oscillator connected to our carrier oscillator. Call this mod os and get some sound going. So now we have a nice sine wave. We go into this mod os macro right here and we can basically make however many different types of oscillators we'd like. Um, for now, let's just try a regular sine wave. Hook that up here. And just to get a basic result, we could just make these two knobs. Now when you're doing FM, the, the amplitude of the, mod, uh, the modulus oscillator needs to be at least like a thousand. Try that out. Yep. See, now we're starting to get some nice tubular bell sounds. Which sound pretty nice. Get rid of that. Yeah, the, the mod oscillator would have to be, have to correlate with the pitch of the carrier oscillator. So there's a bunch of different ways we can do that. This is the most established way that I've found is the best when you're doing FM in Reactor. So we're going to basically take the pitch information that's going to the carrier modulator, or I'm sorry, the carrier oscillator, and connect it into our mod os macro. Let's call this like care or something. So that's going to give us the carrier's pitch information. And to do this algorithm, you need to convert this, uh, the logarithmic scale into Hertz. So under built in module and math, there is, um, I think it's exponential. Yes. There's this unit right here that converts, um, logarithmic pitch values into frequency values. 
So perfect, that's exactly what we need. And to make the modulator oscillator har uh, harmonic to the carrier oscillator, um, you need to be able to multiply the frequency of the mod modulator oscillator by whole numbers, or like 1.5, but whole numbers usually work best. So using that bit of information, we can get rid of this. So now we have the carrier oscillator being converted into frequency. Now we're going to use math to do exactly that. We're going to multiply all these values that are coming in to this unit right here and then have it adjustable for now. Call this um, ratio 1 to 10, step size, you'd want 1 because you're dealing with whole numbers. So this is giving us a harmonic frequency that would best suit the modulator oscillator right here. So if we wanted, we could convert it back into a logarithmic scale by doing log F frequency to pitch. So we connect this to here connect the pitch output into the pitch input of the modulator oscillator and then let's see what we have come up with turn the ratio down to one so we have our basic sine wave and if we increase the amplitude we have we start hearing the fm and it's all harmonic So once again, that's because we're taking the basically the frequency of these pit, of these uh, carrier pitches to like A would be 440 hertz, and that number is going into here and being multiplied by one, two, three, or some other whole number to get a harmonic ratio for the modulator oscillator to be played at. So that's pretty cool. We can just kind of adjust that on the fly. And everything is fine and dandy. But since this is we're going for a wind chime effect and we want to leave a lot of things up to establish parameters for the instrument to basically randomly choose between, we could go so far as to have the uh, modulator oscillator frequency be determined by the same method we use the carrier oscillator, which is um, by the use of the randomize object. If we have another randomize object inside there, triggering a selector object that has a bunch of different values stored in all these different slots, then we'll get a little bit more organic feel. It'll randomly choose the ratio of the modulator oscillator, thus changing the timbres of the bells. You know, the same note of one bell can be up to 10, 15, 20, however many timbres you would want. So let's let's go for that. That sounds like a good idea. Um, we have this Geiger object that randomly outputs clicks. So let's take that that uh, event output command, click and drag into the mod oscillator macro. Let's call this like trig. So we have our trig right here, built-in module. We need another randomize randomizer module right there and then the range would be however high you would want the ratio to go so we can establish that right now but I'd, as I'd assume that you could make it into a knob or some kind of variable so valuable equals 10 or value <laughs> value equals 10 okay so make a selector object um, Give it no curve. Um, hit wrap and hook up the randomize to the position input. And number of ports we established was ten, so it'll go from zero to nine. Now here's where you can kind of make a decision as to if you want to have constant values or 
you could put in knobs. So actually, let's try that. Okay, so now we have a selector object set up with 10 different knobs. Each knob has a range from zero to uh, 10, and the step size is one to ensure harmonic ratios doth occur. <laughs> um, God. Uh, so you're gonna output the uh, out, uh, you're gonna output the selector object into the uh, multiply object that we have set up right here. Get rid of the ratio knob that we set up from before. And if it did it correctly, we can hop on over to the panel view. And let's put that up right there. Establish these in some kind of legible order. And if we did everything correctly, we should have uh, a little bit more control of the timbres of every bell. that uh, gets triggered. So, you know, one can be two, six, four, six again, 10, one, two, one, nine, one. So we have our sine waves, we increase the amplitude of the modos. 